to uh, this little video about the white edition of A Course in Miracles. Um, I promised people that I would make a video about how it came and uh, what it's about um, as best I can really because uh, and this is the book here this is uh, book A uh, which uh, companion to book B. Book B is the workbook and teachers manual and uh, book A of course is the text and we're only really concerning ourselves in this video with book A I had to print them in two sections because uh, anyone who's been online will know that uh, they are available as a print on demand which means when you order it it gets printed and shipped straight to you from the uh, um, from the printing house which uh, saves any middleman costs and everything now they are quite expensive at the moment having said that each each book a and b is about 30 odd dollars each through amazon i have found them uh, cheaper through angus and robertson um, but they've only just been posted up uh, earlier this year in uh, a few months ago and we're uh, what just past the middle of october uh, uh, november sorry 2018 now so uh, as with other things that i've uh, done um, drop shipping with uh, books um, the price does come down after about 12 months but anyway back to part a part a is the text right now it's based on the sparkly version of the course uh, which was printed by the Thetford Foundation and as this is printed by the Thetford Foundation and presented by the Thetford Foundation um, it came about um, one morning probably ooh, last year I think um, late last year it's taken 12 months um, I'm not very good with dates and things, but it would have probably been about November last year, um, where I had a vision. I uh, had gotten out of bed in the morning, and uh, I remember I was just sitting, looking at my phone, checking messages and things, as I do every morning, and uh, all of a sudden, everything just flashed out. I don't know how to describe that. If you haven't had a, um, if you haven't had a divine vision or a, or a epiphany or anything like that, it's very hard to describe. But um, everything flashed out, and just for a second, I saw the cover. That cover with Course in Miracles in gold. Uh, there was some writing here. I didn't know what it said at the time. I didn't know what the image was. And I just saw the Jesus and the gold border and this kind of a cloth look um, woven cover, which I don't know if you can see that on there. but <laughs> And... Uh, I contacted uh, one of my brethren in uh, in the States with regard to the vision and he confirmed that he'd seen uh, the same image uh, about 10 years earlier and didn't do anything with it, I think was his exact words. And so I knew it had come to me um, to do something with and um, I set about it. I made a, a mock-up of the cover, um, not knowing what was to happen. And I have a very good draw program that I use. And um, as I began putting everything in place, I asked obviously within um, to be guided, um, asked Jesus to guide me in the cover and to make it faithful to the vision I had, which was uh, just a, a bare memory. I, I've got to tell you, it was a bare memory of, of, of the vision. It was the best I could do to remember that I had it. And anyone who's ever received any kind of divine... Uh, messages knows how difficult it is to keep them out of the sphere of ego corruption and to to have them conveyed perfectly as given when it comes through uh, when you come through the form and when uh, something happens through the form and the expression of it tends to generally get a bit corrupted or a bit uh, misunderstood or misused but it came out quite well the cover came out quite well and as i was doing it i asked within what is the image or what is the shape, or what what was it that I saw in the middle of the book? And uh, I was shown again in my in my mind's eye an image of a dove, just with wings out like that, and uh, and there we have it. And it was kind of like a watermark almost. And I don't know if you can see that in there. I have to. It's nicely done, but there's a dove set in there. <laughs> so, and then that was done, and then. Um, I put that aside for a minute and I waited for uh, any other instruction and um, 
one morning I was sitting at the computer writing and uh, I heard the silent voice. Anyone who's familiar with The Course in Miracles will know that uh, it speaks about that silent voice. I heard the silent voice just speak to me and said, remove the contents, <laughs> remove the table of contents. So uh, I quickly went over from what I was doing to uh, the PDF file for the Sparkly book, which I have on my computer, and um, removed the table of contents. I made a separate copy and removed the table of contents from that. And um, the capitalization, that was the next thing that had to go. And I realized that this was becoming quite a big job. And uh, I was directed to look uh, at another website of um, people that produce another version of A Course in Miracles where um, I was made aware of everything that was put in by the hand of man, everything that was added to the original script that uh, Helen dictated from Jesus uh, right back at the get-go. And um, when I looked at it, I heard the words in my head, take all of this out. Ah, thank you. And so, so I had to hire a, a, a receptionist because I'm a, I'm a two finger, <laughs> two finger typist. Even in deleting, I'm two fingers. And so I hired a young lady who was very diligent um, in her work. And uh, it took her a week. It took her a week's worth of uh, constant going through everything and putting everything that was in capitalization into into small, you know, just uh, lowercase um, as it was intended to be and all the chapterization was taken out, everything was taken out so that the final product, this book, the final product is the um, exact manuscript that Jesus dictated to Helen. Uh, now this comes from the Sparkly and you can look up the story of the Sparkly uh, on the website here. There's a beautiful interview I did with Chris who was... Uh, involved in the um very much pivotally involved in the court case around the sparkly edition and uh, was to remove the copyright because it was not to be copywritten um despite latter day um givens that it was um you can watch the uh, story of a course in miracles with um, judith scutch and um ken wapnick and everybody body like that and uh, it says quite clearly in there at some point that the course is not to be copywritten. And that's in the original notes as well. So I have heard people tell me that uh, that um, uh, Bill Thetford was uh, guided to uh, put a copyright on to, to maintain the integrity of the thought system in its, in its entirety. That's not true. Right? That's simply not true. Um, so... Book A, it's hard to study, it's hard to read if you're trying to study it and read it with the conceptual egotistical mind that likes to bracket everything down and put everything into little pigeonholes and put chapters and titles and hyphen, you know, capitalization, everything. If you're trying to read it with that mind, right, that ego analytical mind, you're not going to succeed, which is why this came about. This, you can't read like that. There is no capitalization. There is no chapters. There are not even any page numbers. Right? This is a straight out manuscript. And as you read it, you become less concerned with trying to study it and trying to um, aggregate it in your mind into its little compartments that you would ordinarily do with anything else. And you simply allow yourself to... Um, let it say what it says for it to just enter into your awareness, enter into your consciousness, past that egotistical, judgmental um, fabric that wants to put it into a category and uh, allow it to uh, resonate through the words uh, with the vibration that those words contain from the certainty of a mind that has already ascended from this realm. Right? Your understanding is not required Right? Your understanding, and that's going to seem like an affront to your ego. Your understanding of this is not required. Your study of it is. Right? Your reading of it is. You have to overlearn this course to learn it. But uh, you do not have to understand it because understanding comes from experience. 
So all the people in course groups around the world that are all out there and they've got their highlighters and they're doing this and they're saying, well, and then they're using the Theosaurus or whatever you call that, where they, you know, the uh, the reference books that have sprung up around A Course in Miracles to help people study it. Forget all of that. This is a journey of faith. This is a path of faith. This is what you were intended to, uh, to be studying. And uh, everything else that uh, to date, that is not this is not what this you know is not what was intended so and i know that's going to ruffle some feathers and um people are going to say well it's more it's easier for uh, if we do it this way and it's easier for us to stay and we feel like we understand that's fine you have to work out your own salvation for yourself i'm not telling you that there's anything right or wrong with any other book or uh, i'm not saying that um if you've got one of the old blue books or even one of the old green books a uh, lady said to me she had uh, today uh, the other day. Um, if, you, if you've got any other book, fine, read it, do the lessons. It's the lessons that make the text meaningful and um, the lessons that bring about uh, that transitory shift in your consciousness, that um, complete 360, that repentant kind of posturing in your mind, wherein you'll experience something that is not of your own making and realize in that that it is the experience that teaches you, not the concepts that you use to begin to um, back up the principles that you apply in order to have the experience. Right? Forget this course. Forget this world and come with holy empty arms unto your God. <laughs> I love you and uh, I'll be seeing you soon.